Let us pray. God of steadfast love and compassion, whose loving care extends to all the world, we remember this day your children of many nations and many faiths, whose lives were cut short by fierce flames of anger and hatred. Console those who continue to suffer and grieve and give them comfort and hope as they look to the future. <coughs> Out of what we have endured, Give us the grace to examine our relationships with those who perceive us as the enemy and show our leaders the way to use our power to serve the good of all for the healing of the nations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Savior of the world, who in reconciling love was lifted up from the earth that he might draw all things to himself and who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. One God, forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. At that time, it will be said to this people and to Jerusalem, a hot wind comes from me out of the bare heights in the desert towards my poor people, not to winnow or cleanse, a wind too strong for that. Now it is I who speak in judgment against them. For my people are foolish. They do not know me. They are stupid children. They have no understanding. They are skilled in doing evil, but do not know how to do good. I looked on the earth and lo, it was a waste and void and to the heavens and they had no light. I looked on the mountains and lo, they were quaking and all the hills moved to and fro. I looked, and lo, there was no one at all, and all the birds in the air had fled. I looked, and lo, the fruitful land was a desert, and all its cities were laid in ruins before the Lord, before his fierce anger. For thus says the Lord, the whole land shall be a desolation, yet I will not make a full end. Because of this earth shall mourn, and the heavens above grow black, for I have spoken. I have purposed, I have not relented, nor will I turn back. The word of the Lord. Amen. Please pray the words of the psalm by the half verse, dividing at the asterisk. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. The Lord looks down from heaven upon us all. Everyone has proved faithless. All alike have turned bad. There is none who does good. No, not one. Have they no knowledge, all those evildoers? See how they tremble with fear. Their aim is to confound the plans of the afflicted. Oh, that Israel's deliverance would come out of Zion. A reading from the first letter of, Tim, of Paul to Timothy. I am grateful to Jesus Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus." The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, 
the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who need no repentance. Or what woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I have lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. I know there are some here present today who probably were just very little kids, maybe weren't even born yet, when the events of September 11th, 2001 took place. But some of us remember very clearly what happened on that day. And one of the images, particularly of the, the firefighters and EMTs, paramedics, police and others who went into the Twin Towers to try to rescue people, was the fact that a lot of the people who went in never came out. They went in to do what Jesus is talking about in the gospel today, they went to search for the lost, for those who were trapped, hoping that they would be able to deliver them from what had happened, as people were just trying to figure out what happened and why, and all the other feelings that went along with it, and that still continue to come up for us. But in reading over the gospel today and thinking about those images, but particularly of the 343 firefighters, paramedics that died that day, in addition to all the police and everybody else. And how it's always true that people who are first responders, and it's true of the military as well, are those who go towards the danger, towards the difficulties and not away from them in order to do what it is that they have pledged themselves and are called to do. And in a very real way, it's a reflection of how God operates. You know, when I was on my uh, retreat during my sabbatical, one of the meditations that I was to do was on the lost sheep. And one of the things that came across in that time of prayer and silence was this phrase that stood out. I will never not search for you. I will never not search for you. And I remember when I shared that with my director, uh, in our meeting time on that particular day, he was kind of taken 
aback by how it was worded, but that's exactly how it came across to me in that silence. I will never not search for you. And I think that that is truly the way that our first responders operate and how God operates. And it's only under the most extreme cases that they will avoid going into a situation. Only when they're ordered not to because of the danger involved. Mm. Most of the time, the right to where the lost are hopefully going to be found. And this is what God does for us. We may at different times in our lives have felt that we were very far from God. Maybe that's the situation right now. Maybe we feel, you know, somewhat closer. But the truth of the matter is that we, all of us, no matter who we are, because we are created in the image and likeness of God, and because of our particular relationship as Christians, but even if we're not Christians, just being part of the creation of God makes us beloved members of this human race of ours. And it also means that God will never stop seeking us out, will never stop inviting us into his life and his love. And particularly if we are professing Christians, that when we wander, when we stray, when we doubt, when we have difficult times and we think that we're not important or we don't matter or that we're unloved or whatever, God is not leaving us to sit and wallow in all of those feelings. But he's trying to reach out to us. The Lord is reaching out to us like the lost sheep, like the lost coin, trying to welcome us back, loving us back, bringing us back, making it known to us that we matter, each of us, to the one who has created us and has redeemed us and who continues by his power to sanctify us and make us more and more truly his own. You know, when Jesus told these two parables, his audience probably thought, this guy doesn't know anything about life because no shepherd in his right mind would leave 99 sheep and go look for one that had wandered off because when he would come back, the 99 would be all over the place. Maybe they would have been, you know, attacked by wolves or they even, you know, had lions too, uh, attacked, stolen. Anything could have happened while the shepherd was off looking for the sheep that was lost. But Jesus told that not because he was trying to give uh, an example of animal husbandry or how it ought not to be done, but rather because for a human being, a human shepherd, this would be a really dumb thing to do. But God goes out of his way. The Lord goes out of his way to go after the one that's lost. And it was particularly the scribes and the Pharisees who are hearing this, who are getting the message one way or another that they have been passing judgment on all of these people who were outside the law, who hadn't observed it perfectly, or Gentiles or other people that were judged as unworthy of the love of God because they weren't a member of the chosen people or they weren't meticulously following the law down to the last jot and tittle as it was oftentimes described. And because of that, Many people had been pushed aside, out on the margins, thought they would never, ever have a relationship with the God who had made this people his own because they couldn't measure up. And similarly, the story about the lost coin. 
who would turn their house upside down for one coin, even if that coin was worth a lot of money to this person? Why would then she throw a party after this? Most people don't do those kinds of things. But again, it's because we, represented by that lost coin, are worth all the effort that God puts into us to bring us back, to find us when we're lost, to let us know that he loves us more than we can ask for or imagine. And that's, I think, also the, the lesson from first responders work of how they go forth and look and take chances and risk their own lives to serve, to protect, to rescue, to make it possible for us to live in this community where we can feel safe, respected, and able to go on with our life even though they put theirs on the line for us. And I think it's a true imitation of the Lord who seeks us out always. You know, if you look at the, for a minute at the second lesson today from the first letter to, to Timothy, Paul's talking about his experience. And he's one that the Lord sought because he knew Paul's heart and he knew what Paul was able to do and what he wanted Paul to do. And Paul, of course, while he was Saul, was the one who had the authority to throw Christians in jail and even to have them executed because they were the enemy. And he being the Pharisee's Pharisee went out of his way to persecute, to arrest, and to punish these people because they believed in Jesus Christ. And then he experiences being sought out and, in a sense, rescued from that, ens that enslavement to the law, to sin, to the way of life from the past, and comes to have that tremendous moment of conversion. And it didn't happen overnight. It took him two years of prayer and reflection to finally come to the point of understanding what it was that the Lord had rescued him from, how he had been the straying sheep who was brought back, that coin that was lost, rescued in order to then do something to help others to be found, to come to understand the love of God in Christ that they wouldn't have otherwise. And so, even in the first reading <clears throat> from Jeremiah, and Jeremiah sounds about as negative as normal for him. But he also says, towards the end of the reading, that, um, for thus says the Lord, the whole land shall be a desolation, yet I will not make a full end. What the Lord was saying in the midst of those confrontative words through the prophet was that his people were being told that, you know, you know your unfaithfulness. You know how you have strayed. You know how you have wandered away from the way of life that you know you're supposed to have and how you're to be living. But I will not utterly destroy. You know, God, patience were thin with his chosen people an awful lot. But he says that he will not do what he may have been tempted to do to get these people to understand. And even though they have to eventually go through the experience of, of being dragged off into exile into Babylon, like they had 200 years before been dragged off into Assyria before they could come back. They were told that he would not utterly do away with them. So he was offering them mercy. He was offering them, again, a chance to allow him 
to bring them back, to find them when they were slowly but surely getting themselves lost. So this God whom Jesus Christ reveals to us and who Jesus is for us is the one that we are called always to imitate as well as to serve. And so today in a, in a particular way, we lift up to God in pray, thanksgiving all those who risk their lives for us. The first responders who are here, those who can't be today. We remember with gratitude all those, not just on September 11th, but all during our history, who have given their lives trying to save and serve others. And we pray for all of those who are serving at this time for their protection. And we also ask the Lord to help us to be his instruments of bringing back those who feel lost, of being attentive and aware to those who are around us in our own families or whatever, who may have wandered away from the faith, those who may have, you know, put distance between themselves and their families for whatever reason, those who are wandering around and wondering what this life is all about, that when we encounter them, if we're praying for them, what I have you, that we would have the grace, we ask God for that grace and strength and wisdom of how to approach them, how to welcome them, how to continue to reach out to them. And the Lord brings us together today around his table to be filled with his love and his goodness, to be renewed and refreshed and to be reminded that ultimately we are loved more than we can ask for or imagine. And that again, he will never not seek us out. And that most of the time he seeks us out through those who are his people who pray and who work for the good of somebody else. I would like to invite you all now to please stand and we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd invite all the first responders to remain standing and everybody else to please be seated. <clears throat> pray this blessing over you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord, God of mercy, who through your Son gave us a marvelous example of charity and the great commandment of love for one another. Send down your blessings on these, your servants, who so generously devote themselves to helping others. Grant them courage when they are afraid, wisdom when they must make quick decisions, strength when they are weary, and compassion in all their work. When the call is received or the alarm sounds and they are summoned, to aid both friend and stranger. Let them faithfully serve you in their neighbor. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause.